Okay, hello and welcome to the third week of Soul Spirit Elite Transmissions. I've decided to go on a little bit of a walk instead of sitting around and having the camera focused on my face. Um, and I thought I'd share some of the pretty scenery here as I go. Ah, <sighs> so there are three things that have come to me to talk about and that is divine timing or just good old timing it is the dark night of the soul and it is emotions as energy in motion which is kind of something we've touched on i think in the first transmission but there is always more especially when it comes to feelings so okay here we go divine timing or just good old timing so I actually wonder if I should just start with dark night of the soul because I think that that comes they follow they're they're interwoven with one another uh, so I wonder if any of you have heard of dark night of the soul and dark night of the soul is something that is part of the initiation of becoming more spiritualized of becoming more uh, self-aware it's I believe uh, renegotiating uh, or or replacing your ego and putting it somewhere besides front and center which is where we learn to develop it as we're growing up uh, when we're little tiny kids we don't really have a lot of that ego at play super tiny we kind of are just open to the world and then we start learning how to use our ego and and we become the center of the world uh and then we start growing up and we think you know everything is happening to us or for us or against us um and that's all ego that's all ego if you're hanging out with somebody and wondering why they're in a certain mood and thinking what what you could have done to put them there that's your ego uh if you're excited to give somebody something as a gift um but then they don't seem to like it as much as you want them to i don't know why i'm saying this i'm just saying what's coming to my mind um and then you get mad at them because they don't respond the way that you want them to for what you gave them or helped them with that's your ego and your ego is not helping you in these cases your ego is breaking you down uh and, uh, egos can help too however egos definitely do help us compartmentalize put up certain boundaries um, and allow us to discriminate ourselves from others which can be important in cases of things like energy vampires or narcissists or people who also don't have their uh, awareness about their ego calibrated right yet so they're just energy sucks um, expecting every every other ego to be serving their own ego Dark night of the soul happens when you notice or dissociate from this ego, whether consciously or not. And your ego goes into hiding for a little while. Uh, it's hurt and it is, you know, sulking in a corner. Dark night of the soul is when we're really confused because the thing that has been our reference point for for our conscious existence that we can remember for the most part um it's it's in relation to our ego our ego is one of our first relationships uh that we experience so this is almost like a breakup or a friend zoning of your ego and that fucking sucks whether you know a relationship was good for you or not it can be the most toxic relationship on earth and you break up with that person because it's going to be the best thing for you but it hurts and you are going to cry and you are going to be sad and you are going to probably have some poor coping strategies about it and some self-sabotaging behaviors over it um and you're probably going to question your worth and what's what anything is worth without this uh relationship in your life that's what the dark night of the soul is uh, so, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling like there's no point to anything or wondering, wondering uh, what the point is to anything, that is you dealing with that 
ego loss a little bit. And it's actually a healthy thing. It's part of the process of spiritual growth. And it's a tough one and it can last five minutes and it can last 50 years. Um, and you can be stuck in that for the rest of this lifetime if you choose to, um, or if you, you don't, you know, learn how to kind of be appreciative of what actually happened in that you graduated. Um, you have displaced your ego from, from a throne that it should not have been sitting on or that it's time to step down from. Uh, because like I said, the ego does have an important role. Um, it's hard. And it's something commendable at the same time. So it's okay to feel low energy sometimes. It's okay to have hopeless thoughts. You don't always have to hold that high vibration, but don't hold the low vibration of those things that come up. Do not fester in them. Do not allow them to have power over you. Just observe them and say, I see what I see what my reaction is to this and I see, you know, that this is a conflicting feeling because I am not used to being in a different place with my ego and I'm not used to uh, exercising other parts of my awareness in, in these ways. So it's something to recalibrate simply and to have understanding for your own self as you get used to this new relationship that you have. Now, I would recommend that you look up the definition of the ego and the super ego. I would recommend that you look up dark night of the soul um, because I'm only brushing the surface here, but what I'm saying is what, what needs to be planted for you to go and take the bomb and let it keep rolling um, and see, see where you are in that process. Uh, because it is uh, a step that if you're human, you cannot skip as you climb up that um, evolutionary ascension, that upward spiral. Okay, so divine timing. Uh, the dark night of the soul is not something that you can force and it's not something that you can speed up. Uh, so if you haven't had any sort of experiences like that yet, you can't make them happen. If you're in it right now, don't think that there's some kind of wormhole you can jump into. Whoops, I should kind of keep you guys in the nature, not in people's houses. Um, so, so really it's about honoring the process and trusting uh, your personal spiritual journey and evolution uh, and where you are. Um, the reason that I'm telling you about the dark night of the soul is because it's going to help you calibrate and it's going to help you have a greater understanding of what might be going on or what you might expect to happen um, at some point. But it's by no means anything that uh, is a specific schedule that you should be following. And if you're not there, that's you need to trust that and, and be grateful for it. Trust me, be grateful for it. Um, and if you are there, be grateful for it. Uh, and it might be harder to be grateful for it in the midst of it, but practicing the understanding and acceptance of the process is a really beautiful thing and it will make it less painful. And you might resist less and less resistance means you get where you're going uh, more comfortably. Divine timing helps us practice patience, reminds us that we need to practice patience. And divine timing also reminds us that we are not the only creators. There are co-creators for our timelines, for our life stories, and for satisfying our needs and wants. Let's look up in the skies for a little while. So divine timing. Yeah. Nice. Let's see if I can get some sunshine in here for a minute. Um, is one of my, <laughs> it's come and go for me as far as a practice because I, oh, I know there's no 
other thing to do than to just trust in divine timing at this point, but that doesn't mean that I don't get impatient or frustrated or think, okay, I've been patient enough and now I'm going to get rewarded and it's finally time that this is, this is gonna go for me and I'm gonna get my house or whatever, win the lottery, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, and then it doesn't happen, even though, you know, you feel like you've, you've waited enough, you've done the steps, you've come through, you've learned a lot, you've grown. So it's time to get what you're looking for, what you're hoping for, what you've been waiting for. Um, no. So what if you really wanted for like five weeks straight this handmade ice cream that um, is only open for six weeks? So you've been waiting these five weeks and you're like, okay, I've been waiting for this sign. I'm not getting it, but I've been, I've been patient and I haven't had any other dairy for these whole five weeks. My skin is glowing. My stomach is flat. I'm going to go get me this ice cream. It is only one more week. And what if they close be early because something happens with the pandemic or something? I'm just going to make this happen. So you go. But you know that it wasn't truly something that was in the flow of synchronicities, of divine timing. You didn't really get that opening that you knew you should be waiting for. But you've waited long enough, so you go. Well, I bet you that you have a much higher chance of getting pulled over or accidentally running into a butterfly that just ruins your day um, or going there and then not having the flavor you were hoping for. Or going, eating it, and then feeling weird about it because you knew that you rushed it even though, you know, you felt that at the same time. Your ego feels that you've done enough and you've waited long enough is really, ego's coming in here. Um, so, what if you wait all the way to the six week, comes and goes, you didn't get your experience, you didn't get the flow to or the open opportunity to go and get that ice cream and you're like man I really thought that I deserved that ice cream and I was waiting for it and waiting and waiting what the hell why didn't I get this ice cream and then you find out a week later that everybody got some sort of weird parasite from the nougat or something I, I don't even know if that can happen. I honestly don't think so. But what if there was some weird infection? What if there was some odd ingredient that you happen to be allergic to, but they didn't list? And you avoided that entirely because you waited and you were patient and you listened and it was a no. And even though you really wanted it, you honored that no. I bet you that after you realize the good in waiting and even though it hurt and you felt the loss that you honored your true core gut flow about it that somebody your best friend that you haven't seen in 10 years is going to show up at your door with your favorite flavor of ice cream from her favorite hand cream hand creamery or something those kinds of things have happened to me way too much and I'm, I'm too convinced at this point, and I know that, you know, I can't rush things. And if something didn't come to play that I really thought would, I need to be grateful for that and be like, thank God that was not supposed to happen. And I wonder what awesome thing is actually going to come through when the time is right. Huh, I'm walking uphill and I am talking too much. Okay. So... Hmm. Divine timing, dark night of the soul. Time for some emotions. This is one that I actually have been feeling very challenged about lately. Um, I have very strong, passionate feelings. <laughs> And I have fire signs in my chart galore with some earth sign that just makes, digs those emotions in like more stubborn, deeper, more intense. Hmm. 
and it's so easy for me to feel feelings in my physical body which is a blessing and it's a curse because certainly it's tiring to have such strong feelings but at the same time I know that when I harness them correctly it's my most powerful asset because I do hold all of that strong emotion and what is emotion but energy energy in our body energy moving motion in Chinese medicine all of the different emotions affect our organs and our meridians and the energy flows within them so I think it's really cool to think about emotion being meaning emotion as E for energy so it is a really good thing to have feelings for that reason they give you energy but unfortunately so many emotions raw emotions they don't give you that like beautiful joyful happy flowy energy that we all would love to have all the time uh, often we're experiencing negative energies and our job is to either release them hold them or hold them and transmute them, shift them into a better emotion. If we just hold them, that's called repression. And we're holding all of this energy in our body. Like imagine um, anger as fire. If you're just holding that fire in your belly, it's going to burn you up. If you let it shoot out of your mouth with negative words or yelling, you're gonna feel better because it's out of your body, but something out there is getting burned over it. So that's not good and that has its own realm of consequences. However, if you take that fire and you use it to stoke your digestion or you shift it from fire or you allow your, your water emotions to cool it, you shift it somehow to another place in your body, to another positive space. Um, it can actually be refined. In Chinese medicine, there's actually a technique where you take that pure force and you basically crystallize it into a pearl and you hold that energy within you to be used. You basically neutralize it and have it as pure chi juice, some energy that you can use however you'd like in beautiful ways. Uh, so I would love to know if you guys have ways to transform your energy. Uh, personally speaking, I do deep breathing. I do Qigong. I pray and ask God and the higher forces to shift that energy for me. I visualize that energy kind of turning into a pearl in my core and either going down into my dantian, which is like our uh, ball of our, of our energy that we can hold and harness to kind of manifest our bodies and, and how we use them and the energy we can put out there to the world. Or, and this, I don't, <laughs> this might be a little uh, dangerous sometimes and I, think that I need to master it a little more because it can be a little weird but or I take it and I kind of purify it and bring it up to my brain which can give me a lot of clarity and cause a more sense of lucidity over the situation but sometimes I can still I can be super lucid and then also still very angry or or upset or too excited and it's not very grounding and I don't necessarily recommend it, um, but it is a way that you can use energy and shift it in a certain way um, to better promote harmony, hopefully, uh, but at least to keep you from destructing or hurting others outside of you. So negative emotion is something that is very powerful and right now it's something that is very strongly at play with what's going on in the world. 
we are running from emotions running from our out of our emotions i should say we're not running away from them but we we're taking them and we're transforming negative feelings and horrible situations to change in our society we're doing the same thing that we should be doing internally it is showing outside so that's really awesome but just like i have to ask you know is the way that i'm transforming this the best way the healthiest way or am i still is there still some persisting uh negativity that didn't get transformed or am i putting my physical self at risk um or hurting my body by moving the energies the way that i'm moving them through my body we have to ask those same things on the outer scales. Are we protesting and transforming and promoting change in a safe way? Or are we rioting and causing fear and anger and destruction as we're trying to promote these changes? How are we really using these strong currents of energy that we're getting as individuals and as a society because these forces are necessary in order to change we need a lot of energy and a lot of motion but are we going to burn ourselves down while we do that or are we going to purify this energy and place it in in places within us and within our communities where it's safe and sustaining and and powerful in the most life-giving and loving ways it's really important to remember that the battles we feel inside of us very much play out outside of us, whether it's to the people right directly in front of us or to our society at large. And it's really important to remember that what we see outside of us is often a representation of things that we hold within us. So if we th see things outside of us that we don't like, I invite you to look within and think, well, if this were a metaphor for something that was happening in my brain, in my life, in my house, in my space, what would that parallel be? And if you are wise enough to find that clue, that metaphor, that parallel, that analogy between the macrocosm outside of you and the microcosm within you. If you have the insight to really start picking up on some of those clues, you can then start changing those parts of you within. And I bet you, you'll start seeing changes outside of you, parallel to what you're doing. And that's alchemy. And that's divine consciousness. And that's an everyday occurrence that's happening, whether you're aware of it or not. So I think it's really important that we hold ourselves responsible to the awareness that how we run our bodies and our thoughts and our feelings and our worlds is how the world at large will run. So how do you want to be? And how do you want your world to be? And how do you want this whole big wide world to be? And don't forget that you're co-creating. So if you start trying to do some ne some nebulous stuff is what, what wants to come out of my face. Um, some selfish biddings there with that ego, which is where none of this should be branching from. You gotta work outside of your ego for this kind of evaluation and shift. But if you let your ego become too involved in it, 
the universe is gonna take you down so be careful with that too I am saying that in the most loving kind of watch out for yourself kind of way be careful make sure you're coming from your highest place of intentions and get God behind you and you'll be able to change the world as you know it and as I know it so thank you and have an excellent week